six soul gems. Individually, they contain power beyond comprehension. Together, they could destroy a universe. And Thanos must have them all. Today, we we're talking about uh, the two-part miniseries Thanos Quest. Came out in 1990, written by Jim Starlin and, and penciled by Ron Lim. Uh, it is basically two issues that give backstory on Thanos' rise, um, rebirth, and his, uh, his quest for the Infinity Gauntlet, uh, or the Infinity, the Soul Gems of the time, which he later calls the Infinity Gems. Um, for this one, uh, I, I read um, the epic collection that you see on the right there, um, which contains uh, some issues uh, from Silver Surfer, like the Silver Surfer Annual Number 3, uh, issues number 39 through 50, um, and a couple like backstory ones. Um, but Johnny, you read uh, parts one and two of just Thanos Quest? Yeah, uh, it was the first time I read them. So overall, I thought it was pretty good. I don't know if it was the greatest thing I ever read. What do you, what's your like? I, like, I, I like to differ. I, I liked it a lot. Um, really? Uh, for me, though, um, scale of one to 10, what do you give it? Like, I give it seven out of 10. I, I, it might be yeah, like maybe like an eight or nine for me because I, I was always a fan of, again, like this is one of the ones that I read um, back in like high school. Um, so, you know, it was my first exposure to um, Thanos as a character um, and some of the other like um, the cosmic characters, which we'll get into um, in a bit because uh, it, it does touch on a lot of stuff. And I guess I'm a little bummed, maybe more so on the Epic Collection. I guess I can't be because it's the Silver Surfer one. Um, Silver Surfer, I've just straight, like, never really read any of his his issues, so it was actually really cool. They touch on a lot of, like, interesting backstory and give more about the character that I never really knew um, going into it, um, but I was I was kind of hoping it would give more uh, backstory on some of the characters that we see in the Thanos quest, like um, the in-betweener, uh, the gardener, the collector, like, we get little um, uh, uh, vignettes about, like, their life beforehand, but, like, they allude to these, like, past um, run-ins with Silver Surfer or Thanos that we never really get to see um, in the collection, which is kind of a bummer, but um, as a standalone, I don't know, I, I really like Thanos Quest. I feel like it covers a lot of um, cool, like, somewhat philosophical stuff, because Thanos is, um, much like in the Marvel movies, he's kind of like uh, like that warrior poet kind of archetype. Um, he's very, like, articulate in his ways, and, and you know, it, on, on top of obviously being an imposing force, even without the, uh, the Infinity um, Gems, but uh, I don't know, he was just always an interesting character, so that's why maybe Maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I was always a fan of, of that kind of stuff. So so you actually touched on something that I was going to ask you about. Um, I didn't know if there was actually background for those characters, because you're right. They just kind of allude to stuff happening in the past. Yeah, definitely. So is that is that stuff available anywhere? It's just not collected in there or it doesn't even exist? Uh, yeah, like it's it's, it's issues and and, and characters um, that that have had run ins again with a lot of these like, um you know, I guess we'll call them like space or celestial characters like um, Silver Surfer and Thanos. Um, but okay. yeah, in, in the collection, it's a bit more of the immediate run up uh, to the Thanos quest because in these issues, um, like Silver Surfer number 39 is where the collection starts. Um, actually, it starts off on annual number three, but that which took place right before issue 38, where that was apparently the issue where Silver Surfer had recently killed Thanos. Um, so that's why in, at the start of the Thanos quest, okay. he's, um, you know, with Lady Death and he's talking about how, you know, like he was basically just reincarnated or, you know, like he didn't really, um, you know, he's, he's defeated death. Um, <laughs> the Silver Surfer <laughs> issues have some, have some interesting stuff, although it does kind of, uh, meander and go off into some weird storylines like we see him stranded on some like bureaucracy planet where he's got to like try to get a job and he's unemployable because he doesn't have his powers so it's like a lot of weird um uh storyline stuff like it's it, if you get a chance i should like i said the the epic collection is definitely worth a read because i've never really experienced silver surface sure. stuff, but like yeah i was not expecting the weird storylines that happen um especially at the start, Silver Surfer Annual Number 3, which is where it starts, um, it's post uh, Silver Surfer's destruction of Thanos. Um, he's returning to Earth, and because um, he gets basically kind of like a distress call from uh, Captain America and the Avengers. Okay. Um, and then, you know, that was, that was a weird intro for me because like, oh, hey, Silver Surfer, I've never, you know, never, never really read anything about him. Oh, hey, there's Captain America. And then the next panel, they're fighting some virus life form. Uh, I think it's there's some virus that's called the life form. Which oh. is some real, like, it's straight up some Akira stuff. Um, I can pull up a, a, a shot reel here from the book. Wait, 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 I have a question real quick. Is this the is this the one where it ends, where Silver Surfer has to take the thing to, like, a planet? And he yes, yes, it? it's it's a wild oh. ending. Like, like again, like, yeah. is, if nothing else, this question was a great um, uh, 
introduction to here we go some some shadows yeah. like i said it's just some real like straight akira like body horror like um he becomes like this um this virus that's just slowly mutating and and like he's just starts absorbing people in new york and like uh you know the biomass kind of grows like it's funny too because akira came out um at least in uh, uh the movie form uh the, the manga was out earlier but the movie came out in 88 and um this this annual was out in 90 so i feel like you know the the writers or at least um you know the artists have definitely taken some inspiration from that because it was cool to seeing you know those visuals but i was not expecting that out the gate but yeah it does end with to defeat um this this life form virus he takes it out to a desolate planet that he says um uh because silver surfer used to be a herald for galactic who would you know like uh, or galactus who would um siphon the life from from planets and you know consume them or basically like leave them like these these emptied out husks so he took him to this a recently emptied out husk planet and just he just leaves them there because inside that um that virus that, that biomass um there's one like innocent person who is still alive in there and he was you know uh silver surfer is a man of nothing else um you know he's a man of principle so he he couldn't bring himself to kill an innocent person so he kind of dooms him to a fate worse than death by just leaving them to like slowly freeze and die on this on this empty planet which was a hell of an opening for this <laughs> for this collection for me because i was not expecting anything like that like we see the the shot of him uh lifting it like out into space and you know like i was picturing like oh he's gonna like you know just explode it out in space um but then when he finds out there's life in there he's conflicted and i thought oh well i thought he was gonna you know, at least you know uh like a like a rabid dog you know just kind of you know mournfully kind of put him down but he just leaves him alive and and out there to just kind of slowly freeze to death i guess yeah i read that um that annual is collected in a daredevil epic collection that i have okay, so yeah. i read it in there and it that ending makes me uncomfortable like yeah, i don't yeah, know if i, I can I, read that story it was i was yeah. not expecting that um and then like i said the the silver surfer issues in the collection um i could show it again here real quick um I don't know if you can see here uh, as well, but the um, the the white pages at the at the start are some Silver Surfer ones that lead up to it. The black ones are the actual Thanos quest, which um, Johnny had read, and there's some follow up ones that lead up into um, the Infinity Gauntlet because uh, the Thanos quest is, um, as it mentions, his quest uh, to gather the the Soul Gems. Um, so there's like I said, the Silver Surfer ones before that, like they're not really required reading. Um, I was kind of hoping that they would. Uh, introduce some of the characters that we meet in Thanos quest um because uh maybe it's just me but I'm not really familiar with a lot of them like we touch on like yeah, the in-betweener um uh champion gardener and a few other ones that I don't really have too much exposure to before this so I don't know sure. how well they're represented or or a lot of their backstory and I was hoping that we'd get some of that in there we didn't it was a lot more just silver surfer and some of um Thanos's family like uh, uh his father the mentor uh Drax the destroyer um, and you know, like his different siblings, um, which gives some more information on Thanos, which is nice. But as, mm. as far as a lot of these characters that are kind of crucial in this book, like we don't really get that much information on them. But at the same time, I don't think we really needed needed that much for the story itself. That's what I thought. Like by the time they got to the second person, who was the uh, champion, yeah, the and champion. They were, yeah, and they were like, oh, um, this is his background, and it was just this quick thing. I'm like, you know, I think they're just kind of giving us these characters, and we're just going to accept that they're there for an instant, and then they're gone. Yeah, like, yeah, like all, all the stuff in there, we didn't really need that much on it, but it, it just would have been yeah. cool, I think, uh, to, you know, I, I just liked um, the world, you know, and, and these characters they were kind of uh, talking about, and I thought it would be kind of neat to know a bit more, but at the same time, like, you know, we didn't need to know the previous, um, like, run-ins that, that they kind of allude to during these, but right yeah uh so yeah i don't know i was um i was probably going to look up some stuff about those characters anyway and see if there's like other issues that involve them or if there's some like fan fiction that somebody oh, made yeah. up i'm sure i'm sure like especially because you know like thanos quest you know like i feel like you know thanos was obviously a known character um before then but um it's you know the right. infinity gauntlet um storylines the the trilogy of it which is i think um is it quest uh gauntlet and then like the infinity like war and crusade stuff that happens afterward um mm. like that's what really you know obviously propelled thanos into being a lot more of a known character in in the marvel universe and especially you know now that we're you know in a post uh infinity war movies um world you know like now everybody kind of knows the name thanos whereas before he was kind of uh, a relative unknown to, to outsiders yeah he his first appearance is like a random iron man <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's not some like grand gesture yeah, like entrance just, you know, just like kind of weird anything. like frumpy looking uh dude just kind of in like the in background shots and then you know like um you know now yeah. he's an imposing like uh, uh basically like he's 
got the power of the the uh, like the creator of the actual like Marvel universe, which you know we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, mm -hmm. But at the start of Thanos Quest, um, we find Thanos uh, gazing into the Infinity Well um, at uh, Mistress Death's palace, and that's kind of where we get to you know first meet the character Thanos. Yeah, and like right off the bat, the artwork is <laughs> yeah. phenomenal. Like, you know, sometimes the cover art of any book is better than the interior, and that's not the case with this because the cover art looks like a painted mural almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the interior, um, I don't know, it's just got a really good feel to it. It's very 80s, 90s comic book. Like, it's still inked, exactly. it's not and digital inks. And, and, uh, exactly, yeah. Almost yeah, like so Ron Lynn, color with some of the colors too. It is, yeah, it's really cool. And uh, even the way the panels are set up at a lot of points throughout the story and the, um, especially when they do like the reality, I'm not trying to jump too much around, but when they do the reality jam, like just the, the visuals. Yeah, 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 the visuals throughout this are, are some of my favorite. And that's honestly, I think um, when we asked the, at the beginning, like how I'd rate it, like that's a big thing for me is the visuals and the way in which they kind of represent stuff. Because like mm -hmm. I come from enjoying stuff like Doctor Strange, where it's a lot about, um, you know, space and different crazy dimensions, which we go into and like, right. It's kind of hokey, you know, like they, they represent dimensions as like just weird geometric shapes just kind of floating in the background and like just uh, kaleidoscopic colors. Um, and like, that's how they, you know, kind of represent these trippy, like alternate universes, alternate dimensions. But I, I don't know, <laughs> that's always something that's very kind of almost nostalgic to me. And I like that kind of stuff. So that might be why I'm a little biased with it. But um, no, I definitely like books that look like this much more than a new age digital yeah. colored book. It looks so much better like this. Um, and I really like the writing device, how it's Thanos is kind of uh, narrating it. But yeah, yeah. It just the, the voice they use for that is really good. Exactly. Um, it's, it's a lot it's of not, like inner monologue. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not quite the same as the Batman. Oh, well, it's kind of like that, yeah. actually. The Batman Year One, where you have the inner monologue, it is like that, actually. So yeah. I like that. And, and that's where we get to see he's, like I said, like very articulate with a lot of his stuff. Um, he's, you know, a lot of, you know, obviously like big words and like he's very um, almost poetic with uh, the way in which he, he speaks. Um, you know, there's there's a few lines that I wrote down where it's, um, uh, for I am Thanos, a unique being in any reality. Um, it shows, you know, a lot of, um, especially as he starts getting more and more powerful, uh, you get to see a lot of his, uh, you know, he's very full of himself, but almost with good reason. Um, yeah. He can back it up. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, and then, you know, the and then movie, yeah, well, sorry. I was going to say the movies like um, really do a good job of like <laughs> showing how he really thinks he's not necessarily a bad guy. Like, yeah, I don't know if yeah. he thinks he's good, but he, he doesn't think of himself as evil. So, and that's, you can see that in this even two part miniseries. It's very yeah. noticeable. His, yeah. his ultimate quest in this is to basically gain, um, the love and affection of, of a character named Mr. Steph, who is, you know, basically the, the physical embodiment of, of death in the universe. Um, and, and to do that, he's, he's tasked with the quest of destroying uh, half of the population of the universe. Um, and, and he says that that's, you know, a, a quest that he completes, but it would take, you know, millennia and centuries to be able to do it with his, with his current level of power. Um, so through staring into the infinity well he's gained you know this knowledge of of these soul gems yeah and he's talking about how um nobody has actually like realized their full potential and like what they can accomplish and uh he's gonna set out to do that himself he thinks that he's gonna use that to quicken up the pace of his job to you know kill half the population it's gonna make it a lot easier yeah, and, and he's learned the location of it. Um, all of them are basically being, in some ways, guarded or, or you know, utilized by these um, these six different characters. And yeah, like he mentions, like nobody really realizes what they actually do. Um, yeah. It's you know, they have like these these incredible powers, but a lot of these people using them uh, are only just kind of subconsciously tapping into them, or they don't realize that the gem itself is where they're getting it. Um, you know, they just almost, in some cases, like um, when we get to the, the champion, he's just wearing it just because he likes it, basically. Like, it's a little, like, good luck, you know, shiny rock for him. But mm. um, but little, you know, little does he know that that's where, like, all of his power comes from. I thought it was interesting, too, that, you know, because I've seen the movies first, obviously, that they were all on a person rather than, like, just somewhere in the universe. So he had to actually take it from somebody. Yeah, yeah. So that's some, cool some of them a little bit uh, uh more difficult to get than others but yeah it's it's he actually had to you know kind of like fight or, or you know uh use his wits to get into it 
Yeah, agreed. So, uh, yeah, that's where it starts out. That's what his plan is. And um, uh, the first one that he has to get is uh, the soul gem from the in-betweener, who is, again, you know, a character that I never really met. Basically looks like a, you know, the silver surfer on yeah. one half. And then, you know, like, uh, you know, it says like these kind of like black and white, like checkerboard patterns across his body. But, you know, mm -hmm. I've never seen him before. Definitely an interesting looking character. So, yeah, I, uh, sorry, I'm pulling up the page right now. I have the digital version right in yeah. front of me. So, uh, yeah, and he's got the soul gem. Oh, you know what else I noticed? I, they were all, they're all green, I think, throughout the book, at least in the one I read. They don't have different colors. Yeah, yeah, it, they kind of are, but it's like whenever they're in his, um, his gauntlet that he has, um, they, they usually are depicted as just green. Um, in some of the later yeah. Silver Surfer comics that follow it, um, he shows like the, the kind of corresponding colors to them too, because you know, okay. each one has its own unique power. Um, and the one that uh, the in-betweener has is the soul gem. Um, and, yeah, and he's, he's, uh, he's trapped in this weird ball thing. So he's yeah, like yeah. a prisoner at, or at, at the nexus of realities, it's called, um, where Lord Chaos and Master Order are. They're basically, mm -hmm. you know, like, like their names suggest, they're kind of the embodiments of chaos and order in the universe. And sure. he is trapped in there because he, um, uh, you know, uh, he basically kind of been in affront to them and, and kind of tried to rise up against them. And they, you know, imprisoned him where his powers have no no use because uh, he gets his powers from like weird dichotomies and like the in-betweener, you know, it's like light and darkness, you know, good and evil. And they've done so by trapping him in a place that's basically in between all realities. So like he doesn't gain any power because in some ways, like nothing really exists there. Right. And, um, you know, Thanos shows up and basically offers to help him escape, but he he's just he says he's going to betray death which is kind of important so he says he's going to betray death mm -hmm. and the in-betweener doesn't believe him right off the bat so but he let, he says he'll let thanos help him so thanos like helps him break out of this imprisonment yeah and uh you know then it turns out right away he's like well no i'm here for the infinity gem yeah uh, exactly yeah like the in-betweener like thinks that thanos you know he calls him like an idiot an adult because like oh you know this guy's coming in here you know he's gonna free me you know like i'm right. way more powerful than him you know like the second he frees me you know like you know maybe i'll let him be my you know my servant for a while but then you know i'm ultimately just gonna kill him because what do i need this guy for so uh you know he agrees to the plan because you know he's got nothing to lose he's got everything to gain uh so yeah like he uses his power from the inside of the orb down on the outside you know like shooting his you know energy beams at it and eventually it causes uh a a crack and eventually a shatter in in the, the prison that he's in um so he's he's free but only for a few moments yeah because right away thanos just i mean turns around and cracks him across the face which um also this was a little more violent than i expected yeah yeah there's there is one scene in particular that i definitely made note of uh right at the end but um but yeah like yeah. It, it, it's a lot more violent um and same with like the, the issues beforehand like it's a side of you know marvel that i'm i guess i'm not really used to if you read mostly a lot of the newer stuff sure um, but yeah it's a lot more violent and and you know people are getting some kind of horrible fates happening to them so yeah and like there was uh there was some blood when he cracks him across yeah, the yeah, face right across I thought, I, cool yeah so uh so yeah he cracks him across the face and he he takes the gem from him yeah. pretty easily right i mean it, he doesn't put up much of a fight yeah yeah um uh again because uh the in-betweener some of his powers are kind of sapped in this dimension but um you know i think also he just doesn't expect thanos to, to have that power and or even to you know betray him that quickly um and in doing so he's able to snatch like from uh uh up in like you know he's got it like almost like a, a headpiece you know he's got it like attached on his head uh this green soul gem um which again like i don't think even he realized what the power was of it no um it his the sole one yet because he's not using it to do anything so um it's not helping him win this fight against thanos so yeah yeah, yeah, he yeah. Some he's, he's, uh, to have um belong to adam warlock um who used it more right. but like um yeah when thanos you know he's the one that you know knows the true power of it so he you know catches him off guard and is able to snatch up the soul gem with him um and then also in doing so he has alerted uh lord chaos and master order um you know that hey in between us breaking out you know like uh this prison that you made comfortable for him because you know you kind of trust him you know a little felt a little bit bad for him uh now you see that you know he's looking to break out uh they return back and immediately throw him back into their jail and you know this time it's not going to be so comfortable so right i don't know what that means he's gonna have less room than that little ball that he was exactly like, yeah the last last we last panel that we see is like him just like screaming as as it you know like pulls out um uh from 
which again, like uh, Lord Chaos Master Order, like just two floating heads, uh, like the, yeah. the the way in which they depict a lot of these celestial characters is always pretty interesting too. Um, and then I think that at one point they've already mentioned that when Thanos was reincarnated, death gave him more power. So that might be why he yeah, yeah, like like he's, he's got a lot so of he, he uses a lot of like um his physical strength and he's got like um these energy beams. But honestly, a lot of it like just comes from within. Like he's he's a, you know they refer to him as as like um a betrayer and a schemer. Like uh, he's usually just trying to like outwit people in a lot of these cases. Yeah, and then um, right after he gets this one, is that when Death shows up for the first time to talk to him? Uh, yes, because um, in doing so, uh, they have talked about, um, what was it, how uh, uh, he, his, his plan with the in-betweener was to say, hey, uh, you know, um, I'm here, you know, because I'm one of the uh, Death's servants, you know, I, I hate being, you know, just having this role, and, uh, you know, he basically kind of throws Lady Death under the bus. Um, and she kind of shows up with her, like, uh, her little skeleton herald guy um, saying, like, hey, what was the deal with that? Yeah, I actually thought that was important because he, uh, like, yeah, he uses it as a ploy by saying that he's going to betray death. But then she overhears it, which lets him know that she's watching him. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So which which gives us good insight, too, because then he's like, OK, yeah. well, um, I've got an ultimate plan here that I haven't revealed even to, you know, like uh, uh, the reader. Um but he is talking about how, um, you know, he's got these plans that now he has to, you know, have a little bit more subterfuge to go through with them because he knows that death is, is watching. So, exactly. So, um, at that point, what did you what did you think his plan was? You already knew, like, his plan is to, yeah, yeah. So, I, I had read it beforehand, but, um, yeah, yeah he does, uh, basically want to gain all these gems to kind of, uh, in some ways break out of servitude, um, but not to like overthrow death but to become right. uh basically her equal like and yeah, so I was like thinking... the only way to like win her love is not to be you know like uh because he talks about it near the end of you know like if he's you know the lesser you know he's going to basically be like you know almost like worshiping her you know kind of like looking up to her um and if he's too powerful you know like, she's not going to love him but you know he's trying to meet you know just right there in the middle and become um her equal to you know hopefully gain the affection of her right also, a cool. uh, real, real sh uh, quick shout out to uh, uh, David in the, the Facebook chat. Um, he was mentioning uh, uh, today's a good topic because uh, he has a good amount of issues of Silver Surfer from 1 to 32. Um, oh, no. And then also he suggests uh, on Disney Plus, they have um, the 80s uh, Silver Surfer cartoon, uh, which is uh, really well done and has a lot of uh, Thanos and Death uh, content on there, which is good because like I, I always kind of grew up on like the X-Men and um, uh, uh, the Avengers and like Spider-Man cartoons, but I never actually saw the uh, the Silver Surfer stuff. Yeah, I didn't even know there was one. I'm like shocked right now. Are you serious? I, I, we're gonna have to uh, some some extra credit for uh, for today's uh, homework is to I guess um, look into more of that. But yeah, um, like I said, like thanks thanks for that, um, David. Because also like I said, I can start here. Like uh, Silver Surfer is relatively unknown to me. Um, outside of like you know he he's in a lot of um. Uh, super groups um, and you know he shows up for obviously stuff like um, the Infinity Gauntlets but outside of that I never really read his standalone stuff he was actually a really interesting character I liked it a lot so something to, to pursue more after this yeah I'm looking forward to uh, later in the year they're releasing his first uh, series which is like 18 issues from 1978 or 82 something like that mm -hmm. I want to read those and figure out what he's all about like his origin and everything yeah, yeah, because um, again, those those issues beforehand, they they go into it a bit, um, uh, you know, not as relevant for the Thanos quest stuff, but you know, as just a standalone character, he's he's got some cool stuff that uh, uh, that happens in these. So yeah, um, but yeah, right after that, um, you know, he talks to Lady Death again, and then he moves on to the second one, the uh, the Gem of Power, uh, which is being held by uh, a character named the Champion on a planet called uh, Tamarda. So that's that's where he's next headed off to. Yeah, and, uh, you know, from the looks of it, this champion dude is basically like a Hulk, and even Thanos says as much that he's just like, like brute strength, and like, the interesting thing, though, is he gets his power from the gem, but he doesn't think he does, exactly, he just yeah. thinks it's like a ornament for his head, um, so exactly. like, if he knew what he was doing, theoretically, he could have beat Thanos, but he exactly, didn't, yeah. so that's an advantage Thanos has. He is really smart. He's like, he's like a really smart, practical villain. I like that about him. 
what's what's up to uh, Eduardo in the chat? Uh, we're, we're trying to stay safe during all this. You should too by sitting in. And if you haven't already, uh, the Thanos quest part one and two is what we're talking about today. Um, Agreed. And yeah, yeah, he's this champion character, like you mentioned, is basically yeah the Hulk in that he's just brute strength. Um, he's living on a planet called uh, Tamarda, which is um, they mentioned is uh, basically on the border of these like you know five different galaxies or zones in the galaxy and as such it's under constant conflict um you know changing hands of you know victors and and you know who's controlling it because it's like a, a um strategic um outlier um but this is where the champion thrives because it's basically just 24 7 combat and he basically has no side in this he's just looking to <laughs> as the panel show throw tanks at whoever he can <laughs> so yeah, he seems uh, pretty awesome, but he also seems pretty dumb. Which yeah, yeah, he's he's, gets he's dumb, especially compared to Thanos. But he has similar levels of arrogance. But in yes. some ways, we see it's not as earned. Um, he thinks that yeah, like his his strength just comes from within. He doesn't realize that um, uh, the the gem of power is um, this conduit that basically has like endless power. Um, and it amplifies you know whatever kind of energies you you channel it towards. Um, right. But he doesn't realize that that's kind of where his power comes from. Um, well, so they, if, if I read it correct, <clears throat> does it say that it also amplifies the power of the other stones? Like that's yes, one of it. Yeah, yeah. I, once okay. once he uh, acquires it, like that uh, boosts basically all of the innate powers of all the other gems too. So it's it's you know on its own it's very powerful, but then again when combined with all the other stuff, you know it basically exponentially increases that power that Thanos has. So makes sense to me. Um, but yeah, so to to gain this, uh, he basically lands on the planet and challenges uh, the champion to some, you know, one-on-one -on -one combat, which, you know, who yeah. could turn that down? Of course. I would love to throw it down with Thanos. That would be ideal. Well, and dude, he even says in his little thought bubble, he's like, I would love to throw down with the Hulk. And he doesn't say it that yeah, way. Well, not says, even so much that. Like, he seemed to be, like, uh, afraid of it. You know, he mentions uh, that, you know, like we talked about, that um, the champion's powers are similar to um, uh, the terrestrial creature, the Hulk, um, in that, like, as he gets more angry, you know, he gets more powerful. Um, but he also says, that, you know, like he's he's been kind of uh, wise in avoiding that kind of conflict because um, without um, his recent powers, he probably would have been bested. And also, again, you know, like um, in this uh, in this fight, like one to one, he probably would have lost. But he uses, um, you know, his wits and his cunning to kind of uh, turn it on on champion. So. Yeah, and uh, the fight scenes were pretty good. I know we were commenting on the art before, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like him. I'm looking at him again right now. I got the panels open in front of me. Yeah, he's like, he's oh, you know what? The planet kind of reminds me of is the end of Infinity War, the Titan planet. Like, that's what the yes. background looks like. It's very orangish, very uh, just big rocks everywhere. So, and um, yeah, the fight culminates in a really awesome way. I, I yeah, you like, know, because I was kind of like, what's going to happen? He's just going to beat this guy to a pulp. Like, that's not exciting. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he almost, uh, he puts up the shields of his little like um floating uh throne that he <laughs> uses to kind of uh teleport around uh the cosmos yeah. um and and with it it has like um a lot of uh, uh technological powers so he's able to like put up an invisible force field around himself that the champion is just you know beating down upon and um much like at the beginning with the in-betweener um in his prison like that that shield is slowly starting to crack um and uh the uh, the, the champion sees that and he's ready to deliver one final blow where he like, you know, uh, launches up into the, the atmosphere and is, you know, coming down upon him uh, with all of his might. Yeah, and this is the point where, you know, Thanos says that the champion didn't understand his own power, but Thanos did. So he's yes. going to use that to his advantage. So he knew that he was going to explode the planet if he came down that hard. Yeah. The idiot and champion had no idea. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, as he's ready to punch down upon Thanos, he teleports out of there at the last second, um, causing him to just slam into the planet, uh, which just causes like all these tectonic rifts and volcanoes going off. Like, it's you know, nuclear yeah. bombs basically were set off within the, the core of the planet, uh, and it causes it to just <laughs> explode into like a billion asteroids. So, well, I like all the visuals of the volcanoes exploding. It wasn't just like, oh, it fell apart into mm -hmm. rocks. It was, and it was kind of cool. I liked yeah. it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Now it's uh, the Thanos and the champion just floating out in space, um, uh, and the champion, um, you know, is just content to, you know, ride along, but uh, he's asking, you know, like, hey, you know, all right, you know, it was a good fight. Uh, how about a rematch uh, to see who gets, like, your, your floating throne so I could basically get out of here? Um, right. Thanos, you know, he's like, why would I, you know, help you out? You know, I have no interest in fighting anymore. 
um, if you want to catch a ride, how about you give me that that sweet gem on the top of your head instead? Yeah, which like, I don't know. I thought it was kind of dorky. I mean, it works, but I don't know. Yeah. What did you think about that? You thought it was good writing? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, because again, you know, it shows, um, especially with somebody like the, the champion who's, you know, all brawn, no brains, like he doesn't even realize what he has. Uh, so he's you know, like, all right, you know, sure. Like I'll, I get to get out of here. You know, like you get to have this cool rock that I had, you know, like, sure. I'll take that trade. Well, I thought it was pretty vicious. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think it's pretty vicious what Thanos does to him though. I love that, that he like, he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll ride you back to the planet. And he's like, you promise? He's like, I'm a man of my word. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so he gives a ride back to a planet, but then he just like, I don't know, like just, whips him into the jettisons him out. Yeah, like he didn't, he was like, yeah, I never said I'd give you like a, a comfortable landing. So yeah, like he just, you know, like just wings him off into the um, the atmosphere um, and he just like flies down right into it. Um, so, so yeah, it's kind of funny to see, uh, you know, he was a man of his word, you know, it, what happened is what happened, but, um, you know, just not the way in which he expected it. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I like that. that right now he's got, he's got two of the six that he needs. Right. Um, and, uh, for this part one, uh, he ends, uh, on one last one that he goes for, and that is the, uh, gem of time when he meets with, uh, the gardener. Yeah. So actually I thought this was the most interesting of the, definitely of the three and probably yeah. of the six because he seemed to have this like weird respect for this guy like he had no interest in killing him and it seemed very genuine <clears throat> yeah so yeah. I, and, I, I agree that you, yeah he's, he's my favorite of these three and also it's it's kind of the, the first one where I felt um kind of like how we talked about like I wish I knew a bit more about them because they, yeah. they allude to you know like uh the time that they'd almost spent together or you know in their run-ins together um and and they you know have this past that uh we don't really get to see that much of but uh we do get to see it in like you said like the, the almost respect that they have for each other because this is one where he doesn't you know get into a a kind of like uh immediate altercation with him you know like they actually kind of in some ways enjoy their time they talk it out even though um the gardener is kind of becomes aware of why he's there um you know they still are able to kind of try and talk things out first yeah and um Again, this is another instance where Thanos says he doesn't even understand what he's doing with the gem. Like, he doesn't understand its power. Like, he's using it to create this beautiful garden. Yeah. But we find out that what he's actually doing, it's the time gem. I thought mm -hmm. this was interesting, the way they, like, yeah. use it. So, like, he would make the flowers grow faster because he's controlling time. But then he would, like, freeze them in time. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, that was the cool like, at, at, like, the, the zenith of their blue beauty or whatever, like, you know, like a flower yeah. that's, you know, like just perfectly bloomed. And, you know, he sped up the, yeah, the process <laughs> to get there and then just freezes it there. So, it just looks, you know, as beautiful as it ever will for the, for all of eternity. Yeah, and I thought that was, like, interesting. But he clearly doesn't understand if you can control time, you can yep. do a hell of a lot more than that. So... So yeah, they uh, they sit down to talk, which was also like interesting. Like he he really just wanted to work it out and was like, yeah. "Can't we just do this without me killing you?" And yeah, yeah. The, the, the respect like, that he had, yeah, it's like you know, like, I'm not yeah. here to fight you. I just kind of you know, I want what you have, but uh, the gardener is not so willing to give it up. Yeah, so the gardener goes to attack him, and Thanos yeah, like, yeah, man. Is that the scene you were talking about that that's, you were like? That's, that's, I, I'd forgotten about that one, but that is another one where it's, it's very kind of, you know, almost like horror comic-esque, like the, the last yeah. shot that we see of him. But, um, but yeah, like you said, you're like, um, uh, the, the gardener uh, basically goes for the first attack. We see like these, um, these like uh, ivy tendrils just kind of starting to uh, slowly, you know, appear and enclose around Thanos' neck. Um, but immediately shatters um, because he was using, I think it was the, the power gem to amplify the time gem's powers. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, he, so he speeds up um, the, the plant growth and uses the mind gem to, I think, manipulate them too. So he basically turns uh, that attack upon the gardener. And the last, the last like panel that we see of him is just him on this this bench in this beautiful garden with like thorns and ivy just overgrown, like coming out of his mouth and his eye sockets, like. You know, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty kind of uh, grotesque almost, but uh, you know, I, again, I wasn't expecting that in you know a Marvel comic like that too. Right? Yeah, I got it open in front of me again, and it's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a great look. Um, it's uncomfortable to look at. It's very strange because it's like coming out of his mouth and his yeah, eyes. yeah, like or I mean, it's, it's like under his skin too, in, in a few like um, areas too. Like you can see it, like almost like veins just kind of coming out from like his toes and say, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's the right response. Um, yeah, yeah it's so gross. it's. Um, 
so yeah, he uses uh, the powers of the gems against him. But, you know, again, you know, he, he gave him a chance to surrender, uh, you know. Yeah, so he's kind of a fair villain. Um, mm -hmm. And this is going along pretty smoothly for him. He's not had much, and it's it's going to get smoother because every time he gets one, everything's going to get yeah, easier. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's, it's almost a more exponential power growth. Um, and and so yeah, at the end of that, um, he has the the, uh, the gem of time, which like we said, um, allows him to control what uh, he says. Like uh, he could reconstruct the streams of time, so he could, uh, you know, reverse time, have it be a standstill, or you know, speed up time in some cases too. Um, but yeah, that's that's the end of the, the first part. Well, and the other thing too, um, he definitely is getting these in an order that's going to benefit him, so he can use each one for yeah. Like yeah, he, he mentions that the near the one. end that yeah, he's he's you know he knew which ones to go for because yeah, yeah. they would benefit off each other, but also uh, in some ways the the people who have them too, um, you know, he can't uh, go straight to certain ones right away. Right. Um, so yeah, part two then uh, picks up basically right after that. Um, he's on to his next stop, which is uh, a character called the Collector. Yes, which if you know from the the movies, yeah. uh, is Benicio del Toro. Yeah, del Toro. Yeah. Yeah, and he's a little wacky. He didn't seem as wacky in the book. But I'm cool. With. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a lot more straight laced. Um, you know, yeah. he's uh, this this guy that's basically like living on this um, space station, just kind of out in the middle of space, um, which has uh, just all of these. We see in the background of all the shots these like pens of uh, these like weird looking creatures and and just interesting artifacts, just kind of um, in these you know these glass cases, like some weird cosmic zoo that he has set up there. Yeah, I, and you know they were cool looking. They had some weird creatures that you'd never see, obviously, in reality. Um, and I also think he's such an interesting concept. Like they collect living things, and I'm like, that's. I'm surprised there's not some weirdo. There's probably is some weirdo in the world who does something like that. Like collects rare animals. I mean, like, like I, I feel like it's a weird, you know, like not uh, uh, you know, people like um, you know, people like comics. I mean, we're we're collectors too in a lot of ways, and um, you know, he's uh. True. Not really as willing to, to give up some of his collection, although he does mention like he's open to trades. But um, but yeah, it's and it's in some ways too. Like it's he's not even necessarily doing it for the like admiration or you know like he's not like he's like open to the public. It's basically just for himself. And he even has like defenses on the space station to keep people out of there. But he just has this you know compulsion to to try and find the most interesting or unique um, uh, objects as he can in the world. And as such, uh, that's why he has an uh, one of the uh, soul gems there uh, just right behind the glass yeah and <clears throat> geez I'm so sorry my throat's like super dry um yeah and we find out like later that he doesn't even think it has any power at all he thinks yeah. it's just a piece of glass which is like stupid as hell um but it was interesting too that like he says he used all this like different science to try to research yeah, the power yeah. of it, and it didn't work and then like the rationale that Thanos has for why he couldn't figure out like that it was the reality gem is is interesting. It's pretty deep. Yeah, yeah. So like um, you know, he he mentions that you know he collected it because he knew it was uh, one of these soul gems. But yeah, like you said, like after researching it, like it doesn't really do anything in in his eyes. Um, so he's um he's not willing to give it up that easily. He says that he's willing to offer um a, a trade for something basically of equal or greater value with Thanos. Um, right. Because uh, Thanos, you know, again, wasn't looking to, you know, again, he has this respect and knowledge of this character, so he's not looking to just, you know, get in there and, you know, beat him up for it. So he, uh, he is then put off um, from that one, uh, and he's meeting another one of uh, these, they're called like the Elders. Uh, another character that he meets up with first is called the Runner, that he is using basically as part of his plan here. Yeah, and that, you know, <clears throat> back to the Collector real quick, I thought it was, like, interesting when Thanos tried to bargain with them, and I was like, what? the hell is he going to offer him in because he obviously i know he gets the stone so i'm like yeah. what is he going to bargain with and uh we find out so he goes to meet up this this runner guy who looks a lot like adam morlock just probably because yeah yeah this yeah it's just all this all gold you know just like generically handsome you know buff guy like um uh just like hermes just kind of like just quickly running throughout the cosmos exactly yeah he lives up to his name a lot of these guys very simple names and they <laughs> it does what it says on the tin there you know it's true um yeah very simple so he actually starts out like with an upper hand over Thanos. He's kind of beating the crap out of him and toying with him. And he seems like he could potentially beat him. He's at least yeah. the biggest threat we've seen so far, for Which sure. Which is, again, you know, uh, you know, Thanos 
basically just kind of playing the fool here. He's not letting them know all of, um, uh, you know, his, the powers that he's, that he's got or even why he's there. Um, the runner says that, you know, he came across many hurt from the other elders that, you know, Thanos was kind of going around scooping up these gems. Um, and he knows that he's in possession with one of them. Uh, we later find is the, uh, the gem of space. Um, and he kind of runs in with Thanos and is like, all right, um, you know, you're going to basically tell me what you're looking for here or, you know, I'll just uh, quickly beat you up to a pulp. So, yeah. And uh, does he say at this point that it's his, that he's the collector's nephew or does that come a little later? It's not like that important, but he does mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, they're all like these, these elders, um, these characters that I, I, again, I'm not too well versed on it. And in fact, um, yeah. Dave in the uh, the chat here mentions that uh, the collector saves all of his stuff to keep his sanity. After his wife and child dies, it was something he did to help uh, keep giving giving him the will to live. Um, obviously, at this point, it's an obsession for him. So that's actually you know again like I wish <laughs> I wish the uh, the collection here had more stuff like that because that sounds super interesting that he's using you know like this as basically just a way to um, you know give him meaning and and uh, you know kind of push forward in there. So thanks for that info there, David. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for that. Hundred um, percent. But yeah, yeah, the runner, you know, has him cornered here and yeah, like has a relationship with the, uh, the collector there. Um, uh, but uh, the Thanos, you know, again, like playing with this, uh, you know, playing the, like he doesn't have the upper hand here, like lulls him into a false sense of security before he could, you know, ultimately get the upper hand. Yeah, and this is, like I was saying earlier, he knew which order to get the stones in so that he knew that he was going to have trouble with the runner. Mm -hmm. So that's why he got the time stone first from the gardener. Uh, yeah. because that's what he uses to to defeat the runner yeah he turns so. him uh basically super old like in, in the blink of an eye um he says like yeah you know he's millions of years old and you know looks like this this frail old skeletal man uh because you know these these um eternals or uh the elders rather um they think that they're immortal but they basically are they're they're mortal it's just they don't they don't age as quickly as us um and you know he uses that to kind of his upper hand yeah, so he, he makes the dude an old guy and he just starts talking smack to him, plucks the gem off his head. Yeah. Boom, he's got four of them. But then exactly. right away, he uses the time stone again to... You have to show that not only can he turn him super old, but he can also make him super young. Yeah, so he turns him all the way back into an infant. And you're like, why is he doing this? Again, at this point, I'm like, why is he doing this? This is weird. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a, weird, a weird flex, but okay. Yeah, so then he transports back to the collector mm -hmm. yeah he's um Which, uh the collector um can sense him coming back and you know again has like these these cannons kind of trained on him um yeah but uh you know thanos kind of uh, uh circumvents that by just teleporting now with this with the space gem right inside the collector's um uh you know his his home yeah what did the collector think he was going to uh, do he pretty knew the dude had three to four gems i thought that was weird i'm like yeah i don't know whatever <laughs> this stupid decision so I mean, not, not much he could do, but yeah, exactly. You know, you may as well try and defend, you know, again, like, and it sounds like, you know, there's obviously very sentimental uh, uh, value for the collection for him. So I guess, you know, at some point, you know, just uh, it's, a, it's a little better end. You may as well try and uh, hold on to it. I guess if some mad Titan was going to come in and take all my comic books, I, I would, you exactly. know, put him a fight, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can respect that. But yeah. He comes in and he shows off, uh, you know, what his plan was here. And that's to, um, you know, what more of a unique collection than uh, uh, this this baby uh, form of these these um, these elders? You know, that's something that he doesn't have his collection and is you know definitely unique. So yeah, so he's offering the kid into the collection, uh, mm -hmm. which is smart because then you can like train the kid how you want instead of getting an adult that you can't train. <sighs> exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. So, always thinking ahead. <laughs> yeah. Good on Thanos to to do that. So um, the collector obliges. He's like. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good piece of glass. You can take it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's and that's where we kind of learned that um, you know, he put in this this research behind this and thinks that, you know, much like the champion in some way, that it's just this this shiny bauble with with no actual value to it. So he's he's more than happy to, to trade it off. But he does smartly, in addition to the uh bargain, he says like that he wants his life to remain untouched yeah yeah which which is fair i think that that's a, a reasonable thing because you know he knows yeah. in some way um you know danos is gaining power and it's like hey man you know like just just let me <laughs> let me have my stuff basically like i'll I, I won't interfere with your stuff you know not that he can but he's also you know like just hey you know and then you just kind of let me be and kind of uh keep just kind of working in the background here yeah so uh that's 
the train. He gets the he gets the stone. But you know, Thanos, with, he, kind of like how he said with the champion. Yeah, I was gonna I, say like, it's like the champion, like this these like monkey paw style like wishes of you know like he he lives, yeah. he's a man of his word, but you know there's there's some kind of uh, uh, caveat at the end there. Um, yeah. In this so case, it's, yeah, as soon as he like takes away the the stone, the effect wears off, and the runner turns back into a full grown adult, like literally yeah. in the his arms. Exactly. And they like, just beating the crap out of him. Yeah, because he's like, oh, were you were you going to add me to your collection? You know, like you monster. You know, like, so uh, you know, like, it creates this kind of internal strife between them. And uh, the last panel that we see is like uh, from like his his video screen, just like screaming as he's you know just being beaten up on mercilessly by the other uh, runner. Right. Which the screen is well no the screen is the um why can't I think of his name oh my god the grand masters uh yes. screen yeah yeah who who we learn of uh is is the kind of uh the the sixth one the final uh holder of of one of these gems and that's uh again immediately now that he has uh the space gem he's able to travel you know he's, he's endless bounds in a moment's notice so he is immediately at um not even the doorstep because uh grandmaster just you know again i love i love kind of marvel's view of like space and and these dimensions it's just this kind of endless sprawling empty um you know flat plane that he's just kind of uh got like two chairs and like a, a weird you know space chessboard kind of sitting <laughs> sitting in the I middle mean, of nowhere if you're the grandmaster why not exactly yeah yeah so he you know he just kind of immediately shows up um right next to him and uh you know much like the champion uh you know he kind of lets his 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 intent be no, known from the beginning, and is is willing to you know, kind of talk it out first and and uh, uh, give him a, a moment here to offer up um, the gem if he wants it. So as far as character background, I do know that the collector and the grandmaster are supposed to be brothers in this universe. Okay. So that doesn't really matter to the story, but I do know they're supposed also, to be. Also, also one of the few other ones that um, are shown in the the Marvel movies. Um, the Grandmaster, I believe, is the Jeff Goldblum character in the. Uh, yeah, um, but this wasn't so Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum. <laughs> so like. Yeah, you know? yeah, it, it is. It is an interesting um, uh, casting choice to see how he's portrayed in the comics versus how he is in in the movies. A little um, bit. Yeah, like this, the Grandmaster that we see here is this. Um, you know, he's this cold, calculating, um, basically master of kind of any and all games like he's a master strategist um uh, uh looks at things from basically all the angles you know weighs all the options um which not really kind of what you would expect a, a jeff goldblum as character to be but um like i said an interesting choice from the movies but um yeah his, his own character in the comics though yeah jeff's lucky he's as funny as he is i'll say that much <laughs> oh. so anyway so he's pretty much anticipating Thanos is going to show up. He knows. He knows what's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because again, yeah, we see that. Um, like you mentioned there, that's his. Um, you know, he's he's been. You know, much like Death has been kind of watching. Um, Thanos as he goes on this quest. Um, you know, these these other uh, elders have been. You know, catching word of it, and we see finally, yeah, the Grandmaster is watching it. So he's ready. Um, he has, uh, the mind gem. Um, but he knows that Thanos is there for it, so he has it basically kind of booby trapped. Uh, so that you know he's able to have the upper hand here and kind of. Uh, force uh, Thanos into playing upon his terms. Yeah, pretty insane booby trap. It's like seven different shields, and if one of them blows, it transmits somewhere. Yeah, and it, it, it teleports the gem uh, like out into space randomly, um, and then will like uh, destroy like uh, the locator that's attached to it. Yes, and then and that's all, all basically like hinged upon this like this dead man switch, where it's like, all right, well if you know if my heartbeat stops or whatever, you know like if you kill me to try to get this and like that springs off this weird booby trap so um mm. uh so if he wants to get it fair and square he has to basically beat um the grandmaster in uh <laughs> I, I would not have expected you know like, especially because we see him out here with like a chessboard like you know like i thought it was gonna be like yeah. some weird space variant of chess that you kind of uh cliche see in a lot of um you know stuff like star trek and other you know kind of uh, uh sci-fi things but it ends up basically just being a weird almost first person vr shooter that, <laughs> that he challenged them to I, I thought it was a little lame i'm not gonna lie yeah it's okay if you disagree uh, but like, i'm like wait this is like the the last stone like this is what you yeah i would is, rather the fight with the champion be the last one yeah it, it, it is it is a very weird climax to have this this hinged upon it's, it's 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 funny too because um maybe it, it you know speaks to the fact that it was um uh 1990s um and like uh, he describes like it as like they they basically put on like these VR headsets and are transported to another like weird uh, game grid 
um, which is very almost Tron-esque, but it's just like this flat, like, you know, plane with like a few like these like black like squares and monoliths and stuff like that. It's like, oh, I'm, you know, transported to this, this sprawling and realistic, you know, looking uh, uh, this area. And it's just like <laughs> a few boxes. Like the VR yeah, that we have now is like infinitely better, but um, but that's uh, apparently the Grandmaster's, um, you know, the, the the best game that he that he's able to to beat him at, so or that he hopes to at least. Well, it doesn't even seem like he puts up that good of a fight because Thanos, like, what is he, he like tricks him by blasting through a wall? Is that like did I read that right? Like, yeah, come on. yeah. So it's it's again like it's this weird um. <laughs> It made me think of like it looked like um uh there's this old um back where I uh, lived um uh, called like Laser Quest you know I'm sure you've ever if you ever played like in a laser tag arena that's basically yeah. what this is tantamount to and <laughs> that's what they're playing it's just you know they're playing uh, a game of laser laser tag for like the the ultimate powers um because not only with this um we forgot to mention that uh, Thanos basically puts up for um uh. uh for his stakes, all the other five gems. So basically, whoever wins is going to get all six uh, of the infinity gems. Um, so they decide to, you know, meet at the laser tag place. They have their moms, you know, drop them off, and and you know they they yep. strap up to get inside. And you know they're just shooting at each other. And um, Thanos is is aware of the fact of basically whoever loses, um, you know, they they're going to get basically killed in real life too. Like it's not just sure. you know. I mean, if the, you know, it's it's kind of understood that was in some ways going to happen anyway because whoever wins is basically this. Uh, all-powerful omniscient god but um so yeah they're going around they're shooting each other and yeah like you said Thanos's grand plan is to shoot like away a chunk of the wall and just kind of stand inside there and wait for the grandmaster to walk by um, and he falls for it that's the part I'm like the all-knowing all tactical all grand yeah like I, I forgot to I forgot dude. to check my corners here when I walked in <laughs> yeah I don't know that's i that's why um, I got seven out of ten for me. Yeah, that, 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 one's, that one was maybe a little bit hokey. Um, but uh, but yeah, Thanos eventually gets the upper hand. Um, you know, he's, he sneaks up behind him and, and takes him out. Um, and in doing so, is is granted again um, uh, the final, the sixth and final gem, the gem of the mind, uh, which allows people, you know, a doorway into other people's minds. Um, or wait, no, oh, we forgot. Um, that's that's not fully how it goes. You know, he flanks him and and um, but. Uh, the Grandmaster doesn't give up that easily. Remember, he he puts up that weird spray that turns him into. He says it's like um oh, yeah that, that, is that weird right. foam that kind of uh, is like some uh, like fungus that's like taking over his body and like it, it freezes him in place. Um, and you know he admits that he basically cheated for this game because you know yeah silicone like fungus yeah yeah he's like um, yeah. you know I'm not going to risk you know the most powerful weapons in the world you know or in the universe um, you know upon like a game if I think that I can't win. So he cheats and, um, you know, gets the upper hand here. But uh, Thanos was apparently a robot the whole time. Uh, and, you know, he didn't realize that with the, with the gem of the mind, if he had actually used that, he would have seen inside the mind of, of Thanos and seen like, oh, it's just, you know, a, a decoy. But I, is, I don't get that. It was that, that was stupid in the laser tag. Yeah. So so wait, I, and like I read it, but it's like wait. So he was a robot, but then wait, yeah, yeah, like he, he basically put up a decoy, um, and then like um, you know, out in the real world too, he he gets the upper hand on uh, the Grandmaster and and kills him there. Um, but you know, he he beat him, so it's like all right, well, you know, since you cheated, I I get the gem, and and then he's got all six of them. But is the Grandmaster dead? It looked like he died too. Yeah, that... yeah. Everybody has to die. No, only half. <laughs> Not that's true. Yeah. All right. So that's that's six down out of you know however many infinity divided by half. You know. So he's he's got a good head start. Um. But again, at the end of all this, he has all six of the gems. Um. In which he returns okay. to Mister Death. Um. To kind of say, hey, you know, I've completed my you know the titular Thanos quest, and he's gotten uh, six of the the soul gems that he's looking for. Yeah. And um, Thanos still can get her to talk to him though because and it's interesting why because yeah. before he was like her servant that's why he she wouldn't talk to him yeah so when, she, whenever whenever there was um something to say uh she was basically speaking through these like uh these attendants that she has like one's like the skeleton yeah. dude and another is like this um like uh humanoid rat creature um and yeah he's 
you know, he's like, you know, all right, you know, like I did this for you. And like, why aren't you talking to me? You know, like uh, we're, we're, we're equals, right? You know, like, isn't that the least you could do is to, you know, speak to me uh, yourself? Yeah. And uh, the servant says no, because now you're above her. So yeah. you're not equal partners. And, and that rubs Thanos the wrong way. Is this the scene you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. This, this is the one that okay. I found to be like, the, like some real, like, uh, you know, I was not expecting it. Um, so yeah, like, uh, you know, he's, he's enraged by this because uh, his plan basically kind of backfired. You know, he was expecting to be, um, you know, if, if he's seen as the equal, you know, he gets his own like throne and he's sitting next to her. Um, but she, you know, like you said, does not see, her, he see him as an equal. Uh, he's seen as the superior. And as such, you know, like she couldn't, you know, uh, uh, ever speak to her speak to him uh, herself because you know like that would be you know an affront to him so she still uses the these um these attendants and in a fit of rage uh thanos just takes the rat guy and like just turns him into like you know just giblets like he's just blood and guts, up, like, exploding yeah just like we like the panel is like his chest exploding and like guts flying everywhere and like uh the follow-up panel is like lady death on on uh her throne and there's like a, a splat of blood like across the uh the throne or her face or something like that is it's true. definitely unexpected yeah like i, I would have not have <laughs> imagined that to be something that happens yeah it's it's violent it's bloody that's probably the bloodiest marvel scene i've ever seen in a yeah 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 so it's cool i like it yeah that's again like much like me who you know came from like weird like horror and like um uh like gory novels like that and graphic novels like it was it was cool to see that but also like like i said unexpected um the whole silver surfer collection like i said like between like that Akira body horror stuff at the beginning and, and someone from morality. Um, like I would have not expected it to be as ambiguous um, or, or, you know, these shades of gray, um, you know, Thanos, again, even, I think part of the reason why I liked him is he's, he's kind of a, you know, uh, you sympathize with him, I think a little bit, um, you know, even though obviously has to kill half of the, <laughs> the known universe um, in doing so, like, his, his motives definitely seem pure, you know, like he's, he's doing it for love and, you know, he's trying to, you know, uh, prove himself, um, you know, and again, like, even when he's, when he's getting the gems from these people, like, he does offer them, you know, like, it's like, hey, you know, like, I don't, I don't necessarily want to fight you, you know, like, if, if you're willing to give it up, you know, just, just, you have a chance to surrender, so, like, he's not just going in there and just kind of beating them up mindlessly or, you know, just immediately killing them for him, he's, he's giving them fair offers, so, I don't know, I, I, that's, I think that's part of why I liked him as, as an interesting uh, villain, because he's not very much just evil for the sake of evil. Um, like, he actually gives people chances in some ways, so. Yeah, he's definitely dynamic. I, I give him that 100%. Uh, I don't think I like him as much as some people, but he's a pretty cool villain. I, yeah. I, yeah. Um, yeah, pretty deep, more than one dimension to him. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm intrigued to keep reading more though like I, I even though I didn't think this was the best story like I want to read Infinity Gauntlet now like yeah, it makes yeah. like, what happened like I do want to read the background now I want to go back and read those Silver Surfer issues like what else can you fill me in on so he, he's a good character I'm like yeah yeah and, and again like with this one too I think part of the reason why I liked it so much was the um the visuals um we didn't really touch on it that much but like uh when he gains all of the gems and he's kind of explaining to, you know, in some ways the reader, uh, like what all the powers do, like it was cool because like each gem got their own page and like a, a full like splash page visual. Like my favorite was um, uh, the space one where it's like, uh, you know, almost as like a, a galactic constellation in the background is Thanos' face. Cause they're all just like close ups of Thanos' face and like kind of showing off like the different aspects of the gems. And like, you know, it was, it was really cool. Like the way in which they, uh, not only you know explain more what's going on but also you know they do it in a just some cool visuals so yeah i like their work so much um there's an there's the infinity gall and omnibus which is yeah. you know oversized and they're reprinting that and i was on the fence about it and this is in there and like this alone is like i need that oversized artwork like yeah it looks yeah exactly like there's there's a lot of cool visuals in this um uh another one that um was my favorite uh was at the start when um he's heading towards uh, the in-betweener, um, you know, he's talking about, like, his, because he's, to get there, he has to, like, travel through, like, all these dimensions, and, and um, yes. like, he's, like, uh, being contorted in, like, weird ways, because, you know, he's, like, traveling through, like, crazy dimensions that, like, tax him, like he says, like, physically and spiritually and, like, mentally, um, like, you know, if he was, like, a lesser man, he would have broken on, on his journey just to even get there, but, you know, 
he shows his strength um, uh, in, in his getting there. But also, you know, again, like cool visuals, like he's like crystallized and like he's like shattering and like, you know, his face is getting like distorted in weird ways too. Just, you know, small little panels like that that just, you know, kind of showed off some of the cool visuals that I had. Did you see uh, Guardians of the Galaxy too? Yes, yeah. Uh, when Rocket and Yondu, when they were getting like torn through. Yeah, yeah, tossed around, yeah. That's what yeah, I very thought. Much. There's um, definitely one of the, uh, uh, spoiler, one of the um, uh, graphic novels that I was probably going to suggest was um, Batman the Cult. And I want to say, I, I think it was written by Jim Starlin, but it has, there's a few panels that are very much similar to that too of, of um, you know, there's some weird uh, kind of like hallucinations happening to Batman that kind of uh, like just show off like, the, you know, his face, you know, just like these still panels, but, you know, just like these weird effects happening to him that I, that I was always a fan of, so um so yeah i think that that's part of why i was always big on the thanos quest was just you know when you're dealing with all these like uh cosmic and and you know different dimensional you know areas and and, and beings like just kind of the way in which they represent that on on paper is always really cool yeah um yeah so visually 10 out of 10 for this story yeah. yeah story wise uh, uh, you know hit or miss for you it sounds like it is, yeah. But like I said, it didn't turn me off of wanting to read more. So yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's um, you know, why I'm probably gonna, you know, I definitely would still suggest the um the Silver Surfer Epic Collection because the follow-up issues, um, they, they recap uh you know, Thanos and his powers, um and and all that stuff and it and it leads up to um if if we delve into that one uh either next or later on, the the infinity yeah. stuff. Um like it, it shows Silver Surfer and um him becoming aware of, of Thanos' rebirth and, uh, you know, uh, ultimately coming back to, to Earth to try and warn people um, and, you know, seek some some help in this. Yeah, if we were going to read Gauntlet, I wouldn't want to do it without reading the Surfer issues. I'd want to mm -hmm. throw myself in on those for sure. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to skip around and do something else or do you want to stick with it and do that? I'm going to put um, that ball in your court. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely down for um, doing... Uh, you know, we could we could jump back into that one, or or if you want to skip around too. Um, was there any other? Uh, you know, we did. I think what was it? Two DC ones first. Uh, is there another kind of uh, uh, ultimate like Marvel uh, storyline that you were always a fan of? Um. So I, I know you like stuff like uh, the X Men, maybe more something like that. I don't know if that would be where you're looking. You know what I was thinking? Um, have, do you know what the Ultimates is? The, the Ultimates. Do you know that one? Uh, like, like I know, like, are you talking about like Ultimate Spider-Man and, and characters like that, or is it a separate one? Well, so yeah, that the Ultimate Universe, there's one story arc called the Ultimates, which is like the Avengers of the Ultimate Universe, and that's supposed to be like, it's just a short series, I can look it up. Um, I'd be totally down on reading that, because um, it, it was like a modern retelling of the avengers when it came out and that influenced the movie pretty heavily so i've been wanting to read sure. that yeah i'm always interested in that. yeah like um it's interesting too because i mean like you know some like the thanos quest even though it's two issues you know like that's why i kind of delved into uh some of the silver surfer stuff um yeah. all these characters that people might not necessarily know um <laughs> david uh david in the chat here is saying uh to stay away from uh that garbage um uh, the ultimates I, I, I don't know if he's talking about the ultimates but i don't know if you want to clarify there david but um some, uh, I don't know if it's takes. good. A lot of people tell me it's good. I was going to buy the Omnibus. That's oh, like a lot he might, of money. Might be, he might be saving you, yeah, some his, his Amazon one-star review here. Um, but yeah, um, maybe we could um, we could uh, mull around some ideas maybe, and uh, much like last time, uh, we could finalize it because we will be back um, tomorrow at around the same time. Uh, yeah. So if, if we don't decide, you know, here and now... Um, yeah, I'll write down like three ideas and you should write down three ideas. Because uh, uh, all the ultimate stuff with the exception of Spider-Man is hated. Yeah, because like for me, I, I, I'm i well aware of, of more of the ultimate Spider-Man universe stuff. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know if that was maybe just that might be, you know, if nothing else in David's mind, uh, the, the standout of that series. Um, I've heard that too. Do you want to read? Okay, but I don't want to yell at no. Do you want to read ultimate? <laughs> Do you want to read Please don't yell at people. Um, I'm always, I'm always, honestly, you know, like there's nothing wrong with us reading, you know, some, uh, some, some contentious ones too, you know, like to see for ourselves, you know, like, because uh, right. you know, obviously from the start here, we've been choosing a lot of, um, you know, just kind of the the known classics. Um, there's nothing wrong with getting into ones that you know, maybe we won't like. You know, we we can't always have glowing stuff to say. Although I think this is like the first one where, if nothing else, on your end, uh, uh, you know, 
it wasn't all all great stuff for you and and you know recently yeah. so there was some kind of like you know hokey and sloppy stuff in this one but um yeah it's hard to say like i could have written it better because could i have i don't know like let me think of six different ways for some guy to get some stones i don't know maybe i'll run out of ideas after four so but i didn't for, oh shoot, for i don't know uh, a laser tag fight maybe we'll throw that in there um yeah, maybe right <laughs> Um, how about this, uh, Dave? Uh, do you have any suggestions for uh, what we should read next? I know you've been. Um, uh, Dave is one of our subscribers. I know you've been reading um, some of like uh, uh, Iron Man stuff. Were there any storylines like um, one that I was always interested in was like the the Demon in the Bottle stuff, like the kind of early uh, yeah. Iron Man stuff. Um, the David Michelini run. I would yeah, stuff be like that. In um, that's issue one twenty eight. Suggestions for either like a story arc or or, or kind of like um, you know uh, more kind of condensed like stories like that. Well, if we eventually did, um, it doesn't have to be this time, but if we did something like Ultimate Spider-Man, like, I'd be down to, like, check out the first, like, 10 issues, and then we'll review that and see how we, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if, if it's one that we end up hating, you know, like, that's, that's, totally, that's totally fine. Yeah, but I would, because I, I want to I wanna check that out, too, Ultimate Spider-Man. David, what do you David say? here uh, uh, appealing to the to the cost of them. He says the, uh, the Ultimate titles, for the most part, aren't worth more than $2 each, if that says anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving i'm loving all just the the the, uh, the hate on the ultimate series i don't know like that in some ways that definitely has me curious to, to read it more um to find yeah out, but, um, i mean i didn't suggest ultimate fantastic four damn like <laughs> because i heard that one's i mean yeah i heard that's garbage i heard the x-men ones like okay. yeah yeah um, spider-man one's the best but i've heard i don't know some people say the uh you know there's something interesting about the ultimates one i will tell you this this was interesting um it came out well before uh, the Avengers. It came out in 2002. Okay. Um, they draw Nick Fury like Sam Jackson. Like he yeah, looked. Yeah. And when I read it, I was like, "Oh, he's influenced by Sam Jackson." I'm like, "Wait, this came out six years before. They were kind of like pushing for Sam Jackson to like do this role, like for yeah. sure." Uh, and a quick yeah. side note: that's always interesting too. Is like the the you know the way, especially now that the the movies have become so popular that like uh, characters have been like either reworked, whether it's visually or personality wise, to kind of. Me, you know, like we kind of touched on it with um, uh, the collector, or I mean, well, between the collector and especially the grandmaster, like they're kind of you know nothing like their their counterparts. But I'm sure, like uh, in current um, you know Marvel lore, I haven't read stuff on the uh, uh, the game master, but I'm sure maybe it right. definitely reflects a lot more on uh, the popular um, you know Goldblum version of the character. But I think so, reg regardless of what you think of Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> oh, I like his version. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's funny as hell. I just it just wasn't the same. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, like, yeah. Not even close. I mean, so yeah, maybe maybe if, maybe if you had a sweet um, laser tag scene with him, you would have uh, changed it too. We'll never know. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we could definitely. Um, yeah, Dave says that's why uh, Sam Jackson got the role, which definitely yeah, like I said, like that makes sense. You know, like they're kind of pushing for a certain style. Um, yeah, uh, maybe I might uh, brush up on a little bit of, of background of the ultimate stuff, um, and we could kind of reconvene um, t when we when we do tomorrow, and um, you know, put up our ideas. I, I, so if, we're, if we're sticking with Marvel, there's a couple that I was thinking of too, like um, as far as you know, like either short storylines or, or or issues and stuff like that. But um, oh wow, yeah, apparently he sued them. Uh, for using his image, and that's how he kind of uh, flipped it into actually getting a role with uh, with the MCU. Really, that's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Okay. Um, so yeah, but I don't I'm... know. I don't know. All this, all this, this hot uh, contention around it, and you know, leading into Sam Jackson becoming that. I don't know. It might be worth dipping into, but um, <laughs> maybe we'll maybe we'll have to see what we what we end up choosing uh, for for tomorrow. But um, sure. Uh, but yeah, I forget. Um, was there any uh, follow up that you had of? either uh, Watchmen or, or when we did Batman Year One uh, uh, last week? Um, oh, just with that one scene with Batman Year One with the, the alley with the detectives, I, I think I was right. I went back and reread it. Oh, yeah, 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 you were. Yeah, I, I, I did yeah. reread that too, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, they were setting up traps for him, and he was like, I'm not falling for your stupid traps. Trans and you know the other reason I knew that? Um, remember I told you it was the animated movie? Oh, oh, they, they, they kind of delve that. Yeah, I, it's I, a little I, bit I easier that. to see in that scene. Yeah, that's what they're doing because then they show them like reset and do it again. Oh and, gosh, yeah, yeah, they're hoping to trick them, I guess. So that that was my only follow up for that. Oh, here, here you go, uh, Dave, with some suggestions of X Men stuff that you might be able to give uh, more insight to. He says uh, the death of X and uh, Cyclops was right storylines. 
Wait, what Cyclops was right? I don't know that one. I, I think he means um, in terms of, uh, you know, Cyclops, um, you know, especially with the later stuff, I think it's about a lot more of a contentious character um, because he, you know. Douchebag. Yeah, exactly. But apparently, Can we say that word on our show because I just said it because he is. I don't care. That's Cyclops. Okay, you're, you're talking about Cyclops. I'm sure it's it's fine. It's, um, it goes with the yeah the territory. Uh, but yeah, like uh, I'm I, like so that's the thing. It's like I haven't read terribly many uh, X Men stuff. Like I, I read a lot of some of the older stuff. Um, and you know, like uh, I definitely delved back in with um all the the Dawn and House of X stuff. Um, so I'm not too well versed on X Men stuff. So I'm definitely down with um either certain storylines like that if you had any uh that would jump into mind for you um with x-men i'm a little hesitant because i've been wanting to do a read through from the very beginning oh i don't want to spoil anything um but i'm a little i'm okay if it's like post dawn of x that doesn't bother me because okay. it's like so reset yeah yeah um, and also yeah like yeah like from you know the, the segments that i've read of that yeah like they're just kind of starting fresh so yeah, and I've been really, really wanting to check out that Wolverine series that got like two issues yeah, off yeah. before everything went on, on hold. Um, exactly. Well, did, should we do an X Men book? I mean, I don't want to like. I'm, I'm sure we could we could reconvene outside of this. Um, uh, but yeah, as always, um, you know, much like Dave giving uh, suggestions in our Facebook chat. Um, if anybody that's watching, you know, uh, has any suggestions, uh, you could you know either post here. Uh, we have our email. Uh, it's at the bottom of the video here. Uh, comics at pastimes.net. You can shoot your suggestion there. Um, you know, we're open to, you know, basically anything. Um, other ways to reach us are through our Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash pastimes. Um, and on there, we have uh, links to our Discord, which is a relatively new one. Um, uh, we've got channels set up on there. Uh, I've set up zones for the, the comic stuff, like our, our book club stuff like today. Um, if you have any suggestions, you can drop them in there too. You know, like I, I, I check them all. So um, I think, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll take a night to think on it. Um, do more research on these, <laughs> yeah. these much, much hated uh, uh, ultimate series. Um, and yeah, we'll try to have, um, you know, if nothing else, a couple of suggestions each and, and uh, finalize what, uh, what the book club for, for the following week will be. Sounds good. All right, then I will have my ideas ready on your desk. At Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, we, do. I, we, we had handed in some good homework today. Um, uh, we've got the link in the uh, the Discord for the Discord here in our Twitch. Um, so yeah, um, we'll see you guys. It sounds like uh, tomorrow, I believe, we'll shoot for 4 p.m. again. Uh, we're going to be talking more about um, not a whole lot of comic news has happened, um, but you know, kind of talking about some of the news stuff, and then also looking into more um, of the things that we have to sell. Whether it's because um, uh, when we were going through the back here, we came across uh, a lot of like Infinity Gauntlet stuff that we had. Um, stuff that was kind of before, during, and after the Infinity Gauntlet stuff. Um, mm -hmm. so that might be an option of things that we could look at uh, tomorrow too. Um, and yeah, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Thanks, uh, Dave, joining us in the uh, the Facebook chat. Um, and we will be back tomorrow. Uh, so until then, you know, keep reading your comics, and uh, we'll have uh, this next week's homework assignment uh, coming tomorrow too. So all right, I will see you tomorrow. All right, thanks for joining us. All right.